Okay, here we're going to look at, as the title suggests, isotopes and half-life. So first off, we got to define what an isotope is. All atoms of an element have the same number of protons, which is an important thing to remember, but may have different number of neutrons. Isotopes are two atoms of an element that differ in the number of neutrons. Keep in mind the number of protons will define the element. So we see here, our three examples here are all hydrogen. They're hydrogen because they each have one proton. They each also have one electron. Here we're only looking at the change in the number of neutrons. So here there's no neutrons, protium. Here there's one neutron, deuterium. And here we have two neutrons, teridium. These are all examples of isotopes of the element hydrogen. Now isotopes, there's also reactive isotopes and radioactive isotopes at that, kind of dangerous. They're unstable and decay spontaneously, and they give off particles and energy. Not all elements are radioactive. So there's some that are definitely a lot more likely to be radioactive, but not all elements necessarily have radioactive isotopes that at least occur in nature. So the half-life. It's the time required for the amount of radioactive material to decrease by half. Again, we're looking at some take a very long time, some take a very short period of time. So the radioactive nuclei are time, half-life, the time it takes for half of the material to decay. So the same general trend will be for all of the elements we see here. The time it takes, though, this time measurement is going to be different. So this time it takes for half the material to decay for uranium-238 is 4.5 billion years. So extremely long period of time for half that material to break down. Uh, carbon-14 has that time it takes, this distance would be 5,730 years. And if you get to like um, some other like uh, potassium-40, 1.25 billion years. So I don't want you to think they always take a very long time. Bismuth-214 this half-life will only last about 19.7 minutes, all the way down to very unstable that lasts well, well under a second. So the graph will look the same, but the time distance will be very different depending on the particular isotope that you're dealing with based on the element. So if we look at here, decay of carbon-14, we see our sample in years, percent of carbon-14 atoms, we start at 100%. Half-life of our carbon-14, remember, is 5,730 years. So to reach 50%, here would be about 5,730. To decrease 50% by half would be about 25. And we see 5,730 plus 5,730, 5, just over our 10,000 here. And we notice that that trend continues. We see here the dots that are disappearing throughout the half-life. We very rarely reach zero. We get very, very close but we're always dividing by two. And that's how we get this general curve that, occur, that occurs when we're referring to half-life. Lastly, our applications of radioactive isotopes through dating fossils, tracing atoms through metabolic processes, and diagnosing medical disorders. These half-lives that we have, we're able to put in the body that aren't extremely um, radioactive or deadly. We can trace and track where things may go through the body because we know carbon-14 for example, uh, the body or the plant is going to take that in as regular carbon. Some of the more shorter isotopes um, or half-lives that we deal with for isotopes, uh, we'll be able to track and see where those are in the body. The body's not going to recognize it as, oh, that's an isotope. It's going to treat it like it was a normal element, and that allows us to track and see through these um, radiographs here, these scans. This is uh, iodine-123 to see where that may accumulate in the body, what organs, what tissues that may accumulate in. We're looking specifically at carbon-14 and its very long half-life, 5,730 years, as we say here. That's good for fossil dating. Not great for radio, um, radiology here because it's so long. Here we're able to track, well, how old were those rocks? How old were those fossils or plants? And that allows us to give us an idea based on that decay that occurs when that first carbon was assimilated. Hopefully this helps explain a little bit about isotopes and half-life for you.